Well, as the lockdown continues, we are obviously getting lots of figures from the government, especially telling us the daily update on how many people have been affected and, and so on. But a man I like to turn to when it's about figures is Paul Crane, because the Arman Population Atlas is what he's done. And uh, Paul, you have turned your attention to the number crunching on, on this situation and you've been releasing them on, on your website. Maybe you can take us through, you know, and the general public as well, because, I mean, it's always graphs and, and keeping them low, you know, this, this, this business about the, 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 the peak and where it's going to be. You've looked at it and you're simulating those figures. And we've got quite, well, four, four items to show you here, but this is graph number one. So can you take us through what we're looking at? Okay, certainly, yeah. Um, can I just sort of say at the start, Paul, that I'm hugely aware of how um, the data and the constant barrage of, of data on the coronavirus leave some people feeling it's too awful or too frightening to look at. And I'm aware that although we're looking at statistics here, these are not statistics. This is about people, people going through, facing real threats and, and having a, a tough time. And, and, and four people um, died on the island so far. So, you know, condolences to them. And just a recognition that, that this data is about people. But some of us who um, who, who like using data actually find it helpful to try and look at the data like this. So what I've done, I'm not claiming any expertise on the, on the monitoring of, of healthcare. I'm simply using government data and making it visual in the hope that by making it visual, it makes it more easily understood. And so I think in terms of the, the graphs that I've produced, um, the first graph there, graph one, I think you probably got up, it actually shows the um, Department of Health and Social Care modelling the scenarios that they've produced of what might happen as we go forward. And that's hugely important because what it's saying is the way we behave here in the Isle of Man as a community can affect what happens from here on, how the pandemic affects us here. And so they produced this graph with, with three scenarios. The um, likely uncontrolled progression from the start of the outbreak here, first re recorded case here on the 20th of March. And, and they've modelled that. And, th and that would be peaking in, in just two or three days' time if we were following that, if we'd done nothing, if we just let it run. And it would be peaking with maybe um, 115 new cases a day, somewhere in the region of that. The fact that we're down... In the last couple of days, we've had figures like, well, yesterday was 26, the day before that was four. We're much, much lower than that. So already we can see we're not on the blue curve. You know, we're not heading for that at that height. Government's trying to flatten the curve, and that's what every government in the world is, is trying to do. So um, the other the lines there, the, the red graph, the red curve is the DHSC planning assumption. That that's that what they're assuming we're likely to hit. But what they'd like us to be on is the optimal social distancing, the, the orange curve, which delays the peak and lowers the peak. We would still, even if we followed that, we'd have um, 50 new cases a day, maybe. Uh, and that would be really straining on NHS facilities. I think there's 22 intensive care beds at the moment, something like that. So it would really stretch our facilities if we reached that. The green bars in there are the actual number of cases. And, and if you look at that, you can see as that progresses, we're not going up the blue curve. We're not even going up the red curve. We look nearer to the orange or somewhere between the two. So and can we say that we're doing well, that's difficult because you can see how up and down the data is. I was going to ask you that because it, it is very up and down, isn't it? We, we, obviously, the, the sample we have here are much smaller in, in compared with the UK. So would you expect to see such amounts of jumping around like that? If you look at the uh, the second graph, the graph with the, with the green bars, that's an enlargement from that first graph. And there you can see um, the number of cases. I, I think um, it, it's useful to see that this last week, apart from yesterday, um, has been relatively low. Yesterday was something of an anomaly from my point of view. I don't know if we'll hear more about that yet. But um, in yesterday's graph, we'd had a buildup of, of tests, not results not come through. So we had a lot of tests to come through. Not many came through on the 15th, on, on Wednesday. And on Thursday, these test results came through, but they were unusual in that um, the total number of tests that came through um, 
almost a third of them, over 31%, almost a third of them were testing positive. And that was unlike any of the previous periods that we'd had where um, at, at, in, in the first week or so of tests, the first 640 tests were just 5% proving positive. Week after that, it rose to 14%, then 16%. We'd been running this week at, at just under 20%. And yesterday's figure was much higher. So, it, it, it's, yeah, and one it, of you is taking not, into consideration the nursing home situation, maybe, of course, that, that may be one of the reasons for that bit of a spike. Um, are you yeah. disappointed you don't get more information about age ranges and more breakdown on these numbers? Because obviously, they, they, they're saying they can't give us any more information. Do you think it would be helpful to have that? for your figures and, and for people to see who it's affecting most? As the numbers get larger, then it, it would be less possible to identify individuals. So it, it, it might be possible that we could be given more data. The data I'd, I'd really like to see is where these um, cases are. You know, the total number of cases in the Isle of Man at, at the moment, 284, I think it is, um, at, at the end of yesterday. Um, it would be interesting to see where they are not not in terms of individual addresses but if we were simply able to to look at a map and see you know how many of those are in douglas how many in peel how many in in, in derby or, or or in castletown you know so it, it something like that would be useful to see to map it and see do, do we have some sort of concentration yes we've been told but, it's im2 which is basically douglas isn't it uh, so it's it's a very large sort of area for yeah. no no breakdown at all within douglas I've not seen. I've not seen even figures saying it was IM two. Well, that's what the, the health minister was. He gave out that a couple of times. And that's all he'd break it down to. Just say it was IM two. Uh, so I think it's a fair bit of Douglas. Not all of Douglas, but it's a fair bit, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Um, but that, that's what the, this graph shows the variation in it. it. It's what we're not seeing there is is a. An, an increased number, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. Yesterday was up a bit. There were a lot of people, a lot of test results uh, yesterday that were, were due in, if you like, people waiting for test results. So there were quite a few of those at the end of yesterday, 150 odd, I think. But uh, so we, we may see another clutch of tests today. Clearly, the, the number of people that test positive depends on the number of tests. So if you look at that green graph, the the, the 2nd of April there with a peak of 27 and the 9th of April with a peak of 32, they were the two days when there were the largest number of test results. So, so as much as anything, the peaks we're seeing here are to do with the way the data is coming through, that there are days when there are more tests than others and then days when more test results come through yeah, than and others. You get the sort of weekend and that, business and, and maybe the bank holiday Easter period may have also affected the way that that data was being uh, delivered back. Yeah. Yes, indeed, it's an oddity in the data that the three highest peaks there um, were all Thursdays. So I don't know what's happening in the data collection and returns that comes in on Thursdays, but we seem to have larger numbers on Thursdays, just the way the tests are coming through. Can you take um, us to your third graph? The third graph is the um, total number of cases and the number of persons presumed recovered. You can see... The, the blue graph, the blue bars, which are in the background behind the orange ones, we can see how that continues to rise. It, when you put it in a bar graph, it goes up as a series of steps like this. So again, these these uh, more Sundays than others because of the way the testing's going. So you can see we reached 284 yesterday. But I think the most encouraging thing about that graph is that if you look on the 16th, the 284, the bar on the right, and 284 people identified at some time in this last month as, as having the coronavirus, but 154 of those are presumed recovered. So the number of, of uh, active cases, if you like, is, is considerably less than that. It's about 60% of the cases have recovered. There have been, been four deaths out of those, of course, would have to come out. I think it leaves 126 active cases out of the 284. So most people in the Isle of Man who've, who've been affected by this, who've, who've caught the virus, have got through it. You know, that, and that, that's encouraging news for some people are more fearful than that, if you like. But uh, and I, I think it's a, uh, there's encouragement in that graph. Now, you know, it's all about how many 
people you've got in your, you know, to do the actual uh, number crunching on, right? And uh, that, that the last graph I'm going to show you, well, it's a picture, it shows you the Isle of Man is doing a particularly well on, on the amount of people per head of population compared with the rest of the United Kingdom. Is that right? It is, absolutely, yeah. If you look at the total number of tests, and this is actually based on data from Tuesday this week, I haven't seen more recently published figures for Northern Ireland's number of tests, so I haven't been able to update it. But this is on Tuesday this week. Um, we can see the level of testing that the, the proportional blue circles represent the number of tests for every thousand people. And um, you can see for the Isle of Man there, we're, we're running at almost 25 tests per thousand. And the rest of the countries in the UK are running between 5.6 tests per thousand in England and seven tests per thousand Northern Ireland. So we're three or four times ahead of them in testing. Indeed, and I gather that uh, David Ashcroft, the Minister for Health and Social Care, has, has suggested we're running ninth in the world for the level of testing. You know, so, so that's quite a remarkable achievement, really, that we've had that testing going on. It, of course, it, it, it doesn't mean that this gives us the figures for everybody because perhaps there's more people out there who are not showing symptoms than maybe a lot more people not showing symptoms who, who've um, actually got the virus too. But this is the testing. And um, as a result of that testing, you can see that the yellow circles there, which the Isle of Man is always also higher on, that is the, the, the number of cases per thousand people. We appear to have more cases here, but that's only because we've got three or four times the amount of testing, you know, so that our cases are, are, are no high. They're lower, in fact, than per, per person than uh, the UK, and uh, 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 taking the te difference in testing into account. Well, you give us some reason for hope, I think, then. It'd be nice to talk to you, maybe, Paul, each week while this goes on to get an update, if you don't mind, and uh, give it that perspective that you can with your number crunching. Is that all right? OK, yes, I, I'd be glad to do that. I think the important thing at the end of anything on coronavirus is just to remind people that when you go back to that uh, first graph and the scenario, our behaviour was still in this area where our behaviour can determine whether we manage to get onto the orange graph going forward. So um, cutting down journeys, minimising the number of people you meet with, uh, staying home, social distancing, all of those things absolutely still apply here and uh, it, it's right that they should.